Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Now that the political conventions are over, New York statewide races begin in earnest. Republicans had a much more lively party than the Democrats, but did their convention add to existing divisions or energize the GOP behind its candidates? Here to discuss that and much more are the four members of our Consultants Corner, Republicans Kellyanne Conway and David Catalfamo, and Democrats Matthew Hiltzig and George Arts. Thank you for joining us tonight. So I want to get to the conventions in a moment, but let's begin with Charles Rangel. He was on the program just before you. He held a kickoff event for his campaign this weekend. It seems he's, he's running harder than he has in the past. George, do you think he needs to do all this? I do. He has a, a group of candidates against him, uh, but I do think that he's going to win overwhelmingly. He's very popular in the district. Um, and I don't think Adam Clayton Powell IV is, has a shot. So uh, I, I would say Charlie's in for another two years. Kellyanne, is he in any trouble? Yes, of course he's in trouble. Um, he was stripped of his Ways and Means chairmanship. I know people don't believe that his constituents might tune into such you know, inside baseball, inside the Beltway, but it was significant because it was a democratically controlled ethics panel and, and House leadership who did that. He also, um, today I just thought was, I mean, his kickoff was just remarkable to me. He took a shot at Barack Obama. In fact, he likened him to Richard Cheney in terms of the Iraq war. That was pretty remarkable. I can't imagine the polling shows that the Iraq war is really the hot button issue uh, anywhere in New York. And, and then he went on to, um, you know, re really went on to I, I stand next to David Patterson, which I think most Democrats will not do this year. So it was pretty remarkable. It was pretty wrangled the renegade. Uh, unfortunately, he probably will be fine if he sticks with it, and that's unfortunate because of a combination of redistricting over the years and the fact that people will say early on, very smart people will say early on, so-and-so can't win, they can't do it. If there's ever a year where someone in the establishment would be knocked out, it's this year. But that's a really tough district to do it, as opposed to a Specter losing or a Bennett in Utah, certainly um, some of the establishment picked candidates in other states. And also, I guess, you, if you add into the, the picture that he could face three or four primary opponents, right? I mean, that helps. I'm sure he'll keep them all in. <laughs> he'll keep them all, right? I mean, that's, that's, he's hoping they all run. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I agree with Kellyanne. I think that if there's a year where there's an opportunity for, uh, for new blood to get into the race, I think this is, this is the year. I think in terms of that specific district, uh, the reality is there's a lot of goodwill that's been built up um, over time. Uh, and and uh, it's going to be up to someone to make an argument about why there needs to be a change. Yeah, but I think more importantly, whether or not he wins or loses, what he's going to help do is crystallize some of the negative thoughts about uh, the Democrats who took over Congress and the Obama administration because they promised a different kind of politics and what they've seen in the treatment of Charlie Rangel is basically the same old thing. So I think actually the problem might not be in Congressman Rangel's race, it'll be in other races where he will become an issue mm -hmm. in, in the treatment of him and, and his basically being able to get away with some fairly large uh, uh, transgressions in cr Congress will become but emblematic of the uh, Democrats. Is that, minimized, the is that minimized by the fact, though, that he did step down as, as no. chairman of the House Ways no. and Means Committee? Well, anyway. he stepped aside. Um, temporarily. Uh, tempor uh, temporarily. But also, you can't tell his district, his constituents, who to vote for. And he's very <laughs> popular in that district. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that, but to get the, the bigger thing but you're, be, you're talking is outside the district. Outside his district. They've been trying. This is, trying really <laughs> this is yeah. very important point. They've been the Republicans have been trying forever to to pin the whole mess on Charlie. Everything, every misdeed in Congress <laughs> on you no, know no, no, on, no, on Charlie. Excuse me, George. Oh, let's be fair. Just the ones that he created, like forgetting he owns properties and <laughs> paying taxes on them. Not knowing the tax code, <laughs> running the ways and ways means. I mean, I think, again, the, but the issue. But they've been trying to globalize it. Th they have been, but, it, but this is the first time since the Obama presidency where we were promised a different kind of politics, a different way of doing business, and this is the same old thing. I think people are just ready for something different also because at, at least there's, there's a need for people to explain themselves and not to just mm. presume that because they've been in office already that they should be able to just continue. Well, you're a very honest Democrat for saying that. And I've said it <coughs> about a couple of those establishment like Republicans this year. Who needs them? You know, if your biggest argument is, I've been there so long, so I should continue to be there, and uh, look past the fact that I don't pay taxes on properties. I mean, he's got people in this district who are looking to, to, to own their first home ever, and he owns all these homes he forgot about. And we're just supposed to look the other way, and it's okay because, quote, he can win. I mean, really, this is such a distasteful aspect of politics. And by the way, some of the people running against him are honorable people who have a message and want to truly Adam serve Clayton the public. Powell. 
He's, a, he's dishonorable? For what reason? But, uh, he, he has a, a, a rather uh, uh, checkered career in politics. You know, well, I think, I think I just think it, as I, opposed I, to trying the violation, George, I, please, I, I just please. think that overall it's just going to be a time where people are going to be looking for an argument uh, about why people should, should be there. And I think that's why Democrats overall nationally have a really good chance to be able to hold on to the Senate and the House because I think people are going to ask those same questions of Republicans and not just be asking them of Democrats. Okay, let's, uh, we only have about six minutes left. I wanted to move on to the state conventions, the Republican convention wrapped up this week. It was probably one of the more lively uh, conventions in recent years. Uh, I'll begin with the Republicans. David, do you see the Republican Party stronger as a result of all of these floor sure. fights that happened? And, yeah, and if so, why? You saw a party come together that basically had a lot of different messengers for a lot of different races, and at the end of it, we, we came out basically united with Rick Lazio and Greg Edwards as our governor and lieutenant governor candidates. We have great candid candidates and Danny Donovan and, and Harry Wilson, and uh, we're going to have some primaries uh, in the Senate races, but uh, it's a lot clearer than when we entered, and I expect that going forward it's going to be uh, very positive. Are they united? There is a good number of people who wanted to see Steve Levy get on the ballot to see a primary, Kellyanne. Well, they'll probably be united against Andrew Cuomo. It, that's a very galvanizing aspect. Um, and I thought it was a terrific convention from the perspective of it was a true convention. It actually lived up to its name, and so many of these don't. And the Democratic convention is just you know, a lot of cheerleading and a lot of um, agreement and head nod, polite head nodding. So this was a true convention. I, I have to say that um, I was involved with the Levy campaign for a couple of weeks, and he's an impressive fellow. I think you haven't seen the last of him in statewide politics. But uh, Lazio had 10 years, and Levy basically had 10 weeks. And so what they were able to, what the Levy folks were able to do in 10 weeks is pretty remarkable. And I think it just tapped into the same kind of sentiment that we've seen in other states that have had elections so far in conventions, where people just, they do want fresh faces, they do want new ideas. And hopefully it's been a message to um, Congressman Lazio that there are people in the party who do want to hear something a little bit more different, a little bit more fresh than maybe he was offering. I think you just need to look at the context, though. And the reality was that this was not a time to have that, those inside baseball type games. If you look back to the 98 Democratic Convention where you had you know, five candidates for attorney general and, and for governor and three for U.S. Senate. <laughs> no, but you, you had it there. But you, there there was, a, there was actually uh, really an opportunity to highlight the talent that was there and, and for the messaging to get out. And when you, th those were some races that could be won, and, and other than the gubernatorial race, they were. I think in this case where someone is, is going to be such an underdog to Andrew Cuomo, there was a need to be able to uh, come out of the convention with a real argument uh, why someone should vote for them, an, an argument against uh, Senator Gillibrand about why the, the Republican candidate was even better. And I think that the only messaging that came out related to who's going to be heading up the party and, and whether you have one person who was trying to do their best and other people not willing to take it on and, and all those things, which are very, you know, great arguments and discussions to have the here. But the convention with all due yeah, respect. but I think that as, as are to with all due the nominees, respect, it, matter, it matters to who the general public is. They're I don't think anybody read those well, speeches. I don't think the people out there are just flicking their wrists and saying, you don't have a message. The conventions are, the purpose of the convention is to come up with your candidates. The purpose of the campaigns is to explain the message. Right, and but your candidates are going to come out of that uh, with a message that they're going to be able to use during the messages. campaign. We don't have enough time for all the messages. Oh, uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's part of the problem. There's none no specific one. Well, sure. 